so uh, we should get rolling. Uh, would yeah. you folks like to join with me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Uh, I haven't even looked, had a chance to look too much at the minutes. I know the main order of business tonight. I have been reminded by many people of that. <clears throat> um, so uh, do we do minutes? First, the agenda item is the minutes from the last meeting, which was when? Monday, June 5th. June 5th, okay. Uh, have you had a chance to look at the minutes, folks? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. If uh, you're supporting the adoption of the minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous, Kelly. Okay. Um, the overview of the meeting as I see it here. Uh, the construction update, the time capsule, and the naming of the school, and then any other new business. Does anybody have anything that they do not want to discuss on there? Okay. Uh, here we go. Um, uh, Walter? Are you doing the construction update? I will do the construction update, yep. I have heard that the school committee had an opportunity to go through the school today, and uh, they seem kind of enthused. <laughs> <laughs> so that'd be good. Yep, so we had a, a tour earlier today with the school committee. Um, just some big stuff that we've done over the past um, all here. summer. Uh, we've got the binder down for um, about 55% of the roadways around the school. Um, so we've been using that. That's helping keep dust down around the school. It's helping the other school facilities. Um, we're working with Ruby. John, we got a chair right here. The uh, yep. elementary school teachers um, to keep traffic and um, students safe. So we've got a good plan in place. We're working on that. Um, some big construction activities that are ongoing. We have drywall happening in the building. We have windows in A, B, C wing. We have curtain wall activities ongoing. Uh, we should see a delivery of metal panels this week, um, and those will start going on the building. Um, the roof uh, is basically tight. Uh, there's about there's one area that they're working on, and the only other area that any water is um, coming in is where we don't have the translucence in yet, but CTA is working to button those up with temporary conditions, so no issues there. Um, we had uh, preliminary acoustical testing in the building today. Um, uh, we'll, we should get those results we back, and that's basically just to see how well we're doing on the uh, wall, wall to wall between the two classrooms. Um, no numbers back on that yet. Um, some other items right now we have, uh, let's see, uh, total build to date. Uh, Twenty million three hundred fifty-six thousand. That's about forty-four percent of the contract. Um, we have ninety percent right. of the contingency left. Yep, I'm just heading down to that one. It's just taking a minute. Uh, ninety point one, ninety point six percent of the contingency left. Um, we have about nine percent. Uh, in change orders right now and we have about 13 percent in potential change orders um, and the way PMA tracks uh, potential is the worst exposure that we could have that's what we track um, we try to make sure that number is a safe number so that we know what's upcoming and we try to work it back from there um, so we're in very good shape we're um, about 53 percent through the contract time um, we've had no incidents on site uh, I kind of, I guess I can kind of open it up to questions from there. So if anyone has questions on construction update, or comments, or comments, yep. 
I have a question. Yep. Is the, the timeline still the same? Is it still August? We're still on schedule. For August 2018? We are on schedule for a building turnover, which is phase one of June 22nd of 2018. Okay. Um, at that point is when we would begin moving FF&E into the building. Um, the school would, uh, the other two schools would then be demoed. The site uh, uh, phase two would then begin. Okay. Uh, still on target for the September, late August early September opening. Okay. Walter, we were going to do something with those buildings. What was the window of time there again? It was pretty just short. Wasn't it? We just played. Uh, do so, you, do you mean? Yep, we have one week to vacate those buildings. Um, but we're already working with Dave on getting the furniture out of those buildings. Um, and uh, CTA is working on getting two different uh, subcontractors to work on those buildings so that he has, they have multiple um, ways and, to attack that. And Ruby, I don't know if Ruby wants to address this because she's really leading this, but Ruby's begun working with the teachers in terms of just going through the current classrooms and making decisions about uh, what things would be recycled, what things are going to be saved and moved into the new building, uh, and what things are going to be trashed. Yep. Sure, and we're also, I, uh, I don't know if Ruby if you want to talk about that a little bit. Just sure, so. I'll speak to that. So we're going to get started actually this month um, having teachers who want to volunteer on Fridays after school to just spend an hour and a half going through this whole process of sorting things because we're, we're going to need to look at items that we're donating, items that are clearly they just belong in the trash can because they are, aren't, they have no longer um, no use anymore, items that we're going to be um, um, <clears throat> moving to the new school and things that need to go in it just, you know, as I mentioned, donations. So there's a lot of material, a lot of curriculum material, a lot of textbooks, just lots of things in the elementary school building. And we um, have been talking about this for a couple of years, just in, in terms of sorting, recycling, and, and cleaning out. So we're, we're getting started and um, working with PMA um, in the process of <clears throat> getting boxes and uh, determining, again, what needs to be, what needs to move with us. There'll be definitely some decisions that Dave will be making along with I and, and Scott um, and in terms of what we're keeping. And then we're going through the process with the, with the furniture consultant as well. She's coming to meet with us again on Thursday. Um, <clears throat> some of our furniture may be in good condition that we will be taking with us to the new school. So we've started the, the process. Yep, we're right on track with that based on our schedule. Um, if not ahead with Ruby and Dave and Scott taking <coughs> the opportunity to work with the teachers on, on getting rid of extra and trash. So we're <clears throat> ahead, if not right on schedule. Andy, go ahead. Walter, John brought up uh, a question he asked me about the tiles and the placement being in Dura Rock or on uh, Sheet Rock. What, did we decide on that or anything, or is any movements? Yeah, well, um, I can answer that. You got it. Um, the, the Sheet Rock, we originally thought it was one layer. It's actually two layers is what's in the contract we're all set because it's double layer that gives you an inch and a, so it's five and a half it's five ace two layers of five ace correct yep. Walter? yeah so that was a I, I, well i feel much better about it i don't want to see a we, one we were having a miscommunication when we were first right explain it we yeah well actually the, 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 i mean what it was explained to me it was one layer right correct and then that's what gave me the you know the blinking lights but yep. you know once we once i uh was told that no no that's a double layer then we're good yeah. other comments questions quick question can you talk what? a little bit about what's going on on the left side of the site beside the parking lot where you've got you know the the, the dirt dug up and that is that a staging area for uh the fields or anything the piles of the yes. dirt behind the school yes to the left of, to the left of the parking lot the where it was all dug out around there Oh, um, that yep, yep. Where the loader is. Um, sorry, I thought you meant on the on the site. Um, that area was something that CTA had tried to take advantage of, or was going to take advantage of getting work done over there. Uh, they didn't get to it this summer. It's not on there. It wasn't on their schedule. It was also a, an overflow parking area in case we ever had an emergency where we needed more parking. They were going to be able to use that. Um, it's nothing right now. Um, so no issues over there. Yeah. I just wanted to say too, for the board's benefit and the folks at home, that you know our our consultant Walter and company and and uh, Chad and so forth have really really mm -hmm. kept their thumb 
on on the contractor there and really given us a good job there. Um, I mean, you know, it, we, it started off challenging, as we all know, and, and uh, they've done a great job, and that's why you see that, and you have all us, as a, as a smaller group of us as watchdogs on there, to, you know, bulldogs, to make sure that there's the extras stay in check and all that. But, but with you know, I, I personally feel very comfortable with them there, and uh, they've done a good job for us, and I think the people need to know that. That's the reason the contingency is not blown out of the water and <laughs> things of that nature, because that's typically what happens. It's a it becomes a feeding frenzy with these things if you don't have, you know, people like that. So it's they're doing, and plus the the work is very very strong. It's, it's good. Thank you. Thank you. Another point to be made there is that the subcommittee, which is the construction company co uh, committee, which includes PMA and CTA both, and then Ruby and Michael and Scott and John and Dave. Um, and, and Bill Harmon. And Billy Harmon, yeah, who's, who yeah, yeah, who we <laughs> drafted. But that committee has been every Thursday morning, and I stop in once in a while, and I see them going through things before they meet with the construction company and then with the construction company. So the oversight appears to me to be excellent. And I also commend PMA and the CTA is, is doing a decent job. So that is good. Anybody else got any? I James. Have, I have a question. We, did <clears throat> we just did the walkthrough and it was, it looked awesome. It's starting to take form and you can really see a lot of the shapes in most of the rooms. Um, but one of the questions that did come up, I know Walter was going to look into it, but I don't know if anyone on this committee remembers about shades or blinds on the windows what the decision was on that, what the final decision was on that. Um, we it was a, we'll I just will, was it not the full windows and just the half windows or was it all of them? Do you remember? So now, it was just as we were walking through, there was a so conversation. So now open the pressure on Walter to look that up. Yeah. Just I'll, try to, I'll try to open it up right now. As I, we're just, as we're going. See if anybody here remembered it at all. Value engineering. I think we changed the original proposal for the shades, but I believe there are still shades. But okay. we'll, we'll check it on that. So, I just ask if anybody remembers. I was just decided. wondering if anyone on the committee remembered that conversation. Well, yeah, no, yeah. no. We, right. There was a lot of things discussed at that value engineering meeting. <laughs> I remember hearing that discussed at some point. Yeah, it was discussed. I just don't remember the conclusion that we. Yeah. The value engineering meeting that one went on for a while. Yeah. There are definitely shades in the building. I just need to go through. They're in the specs. They're in the building. I just need to go through and figure out exactly where. Right. Some of them are motorized, some of them are not. Yep. Just yeah. depends on the location, yep. but yep. the high locations are definitely motorized. We've been going through that. I do know that. Um, I'll, I'll double check and get we back to you. We have a lot of windows, that. so we're going to need a lot of shades. I know. Yep. <laughs> and they open. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, though, the that's windows. a conversation, have, yeah. too, though, that is part of that, that, that the opening the windows may not be the great thing. Yeah. No, it may not, but I mean, in an emergency it's or such, it's, it's something you, know. you should always I think only open so far, right? Have the windows are yeah, open or there's some. Oh, right. Yeah, it's it's actually really cool. Yeah, yeah, that's that's like fresh air. I mean, I that's know they, more, I know they talk about that a lot with the newer buildings, but I'd like to see opening windows where possible. I would think the kids might, I would feel claustrophobic if all the windows are buttoned down, you can't get them open. Fresh air. Anyway, yep, right, I'm an old fresh air freak. We did talk about that as well. They just go out a little bit, right? They're, uh, yeah, they're they're not, not like fully open right now. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just a crack open. Right. Yep. Okay. But that, that allows air in there. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yes. Okay, any uh, other discussion we'd like to have on the construction? Okay, review. Next item is the time capsule. I've got something that happened, Ruby. Uh, I in the I was looking at the agenda, naming the school. So I called the chairman of the uh, historical committee in town, um, Connie Shaw. <clears throat> uh, she said that her daughter helped bury the time capsule for the Irwin Washburn School. For the Irwin she knows exactly where it is. That's great. That's exciting because we're, we're, we're trying to narrow down exactly where it is and we've well, talked to a few people. She's going to come down, not this weekend, but next weekend, and I'm going to take her over there and I'm going to say, 
Jackie, put an X where you think it is. <laughs> How old was Jackie, do you think, when this happened? She is now in the range of 55, 54. We're thinking this was about 35 Seven. years ago. Yep, like yep. Um, Maybe 40. So somebody <clears throat> to historically help us where it is. And that's, that's fabulous. We've been working with, actually, Kelly's talked to Richard Brown, who is a retired custodian of the elementary school, to try to determine exactly where it is. We talked to Mary Ross, Tish Leatherby, their, their children um, <clears throat> thought that they remembered. Everyone thinks that it's either on the circle, the EKW circle where the flagpole is, either there, or the garden right outside of the EKW building. Or when you're walking into the building to the, to the right, there's a, uh, the doorbell and then the green grassy area there, right, right in there. Most people seem to think that it's right generally in, in that area. So we could definitely use Connie's, Connie's she, daughter's she help. She helped uh, very. Great. That's perfect. So That's great. says Connie. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, well, it's very exciting. It's, it's something that the kids are really going to be excited about and connect with. And I actually asked Mr. Baldo to come over um, to our meeting tonight so that he can help. He's actually um, working really closely with me on this, and he has some great ideas. So I'll share a little bit with you, and then I'll have Bob um, share anything that I've left out. But once we, once we dig it with Dave's help and um, locate it, we want to have a student-wide gathering. Um, which is, we're thinking on or around the, the end of October, early November, M maybe sooner. Right now we're just, we're just, um, we have a plan um, and we could definitely move that up. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that uh, Mr. Baldo would like to do, which I think is a great idea, is um, once we've dug up the, the time capsule and opened it up and had a whole student-wide assembly just to be very excited about what we're taking out of the, the capsule. We, we really don't have any idea what's in the capsule. So we're very excited about that. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to just celebrate with the kids. We think that there's probably you know, a newspaper that will be reading the article and, and making it very educational and talking to them about um, all the other items that are in the capsule. Then after that, um, Mr. Baldo is going to work on a survey that we're going to, s going to send out, or we're planning to send out, to our Carver Elementary School families to sort of gain some feedback from them about what items they would like to see placed in the new time capsule. Um, <clears throat> so we'll get some feedback from them. Um, <clears throat> then we're going to also get some feedback around about what when they would like to have it be opened because one of the ideas that Mr. Baldo also shared and I'll let him speak to this is having a little plaque that will um, go along with the new time capsule uh, just stating just something like um, <clears throat> our gift to the future sealed and the date that it was sealed and then some direction on as to when we want them to open it, whether it's 50 years from now or 70 years from now or, or something like that. So <clears throat> um, I'll pass around um, our idea for the, the time capsule. It's a stainless steel, steel um, container that can be buried. Um, well, our plan with the capsule, we've been working with Matt from uh, HMFH. He is um, planning to have it inside this new school building in a wall in the foyer where we can have it displayed for everyone to see behind a, a, a glass so that the kids can view it, families can view it, everyone can, can view it. And it will, the proposal right now, he showed us, Matt showed us last week, um, would be to put the capsule a little below uh, sort of eye level for the children. So right about here. And then the plaque that we're recommending would be above it in the foyer. So we're very excited about that. And i um, going to get, again, feedback from the community and just get the kids involved. And I'll let Mr. Baldo share some other things and other ideas, because I'm sure I left out a few. Um, Should, I mean, we can we can invite Bob up to uh, and if we can get him on a mic, that would be great for the community. Right I'll share mine. <laughs> and Bob, thanks for coming tonight. No, no problem. 
Thank you for having me. Um, I, I spoke to Ruby last year regarding the time capsule, um, the idea of bringing as much history forward with the new school after having been here over 30 years. I wanted to make sure that we brought some of the old forward. And two pieces that I'd love to see move forward with the time capsule, once we open our current one, maybe there's something in there we can move forward another 70 years. You know, something that's in there that we could say, let's, let's put that back. Let's let that go and continue. That was one other piece. And the reason um, I had spoken to Ruby and we had talked about having it visual is so we don't have to go through this again in 50 years where we're trying to find the thing. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll know where it is. Uh, we'll know where it is. You'll, you'll get to see it. And I think it would be, it, it'd be exciting for the generations to see what it, so you know, we looked for a nice looking one, something that would look nice in the lobby, that would look um, pleasant for the kids. So that's all I have to say. Um, Ruby, is, it's been great working so far with Ruby. And we've got a lot of plans for this as we move forward. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you, Bob, for your input. <clears throat> the, uh, the moving from yeah. one school to the other, I hadn't really thought how huge a move it's going to be with uh, deciding what furniture and what curriculum materials and so on are going to move with you and what you're going to discard and then the time capsule and the thought and the efforts that are going to go through this next year, that's going to be pretty huge. It is. It's, it's yeah. huge. Yeah. I try not to think about it too much because <laughs> it can yeah. be overwhelming. It's, it's absolutely um, huge. Just like I said, there's um, <clears throat> 850 children to move across, uh, 70 teachers, um, you know, several paras. <coughs> Um, but they're very hardworking, very dedicated, and all very excited and can't wait and have been a part of the process all along. So um, <clears throat> they're ready. I love the time capsule idea, just kind of passing it forward. I mean, I'd be happy to donate all of my children's slime. Like, <laughs> to go right in that time capsule. <laughs> no, I love that idea. I like the display idea, too. So it, you're not going through a situation like this where you're trying to figure out where it is and who knows where it is. I like the idea that it'll be right where people can see it. John can tell you why it was buried. I think they buried him in the past in case of fire. Mm. Oh, makes sense. So the other piece, Dick, that I know you had mentioned, not directly related to the time capsule, but the same concept is right now both the current build, both the Governor John building and the O.N.K. Washburn building have plaques. Yes. Um, for the building committees. Distinct, um, nice plaques. brass plaques. So both, uh, both those plaques are going to come forward as well. Uh, I talked to Matt a little bit about uh, putting them as part of the display with the time capsule. So we're still shaking that idea out if they're going to, but those plaques are going to come forward into the new building and we're going to find a spot for the, both of those plaques in the new building as well. Good, because there are Maybe a lot. It's going to be with the building plaque the, yeah. the, for this building committee. There are a lot of family, old family names on that plaque. You know, the Westons. I'm not sure Alan's got family on it. Alan yeah, was Alan your does. father? Uh, the Dunham, Dunhams are on the plaque. Yep. Okay. So there were a number of families in town that had grandfathers and relatives on that, uh, on those two committees. So that's cool. That's good. Okay. Do we have uh, any more discussion around the ceremonials and such? Not the big ceremonial, right? Um, the uh, agenda item, naming of the school. Um, so I had. Let me just go through the process that I. Yes, I do, through. except I wanted okay. to make sure that if, if we, and it seems like we're going to come down to a vote, mm -hmm. and it would be the members of the committee, and I don't mean to put you out, Andy, but oh, no, <laughs> James is here. You'll have to confer with him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we'll, we'll do it as a. As a vote, a hand up vote mm -hmm. when we get to it, uh, if we need to. Okay, please squat. So the, uh, I'll just review the school committee policy in regards to naming of a new school, uh, and that I've, uh, you know, that I've followed that policy to bring us here tonight to have this vote on what the name's going to be. Um, ultimately, it says that 
the school, the superintendent uh, should try to solicit some responses from the community in terms of what they want to see as a name uh, and get input from the community uh, and from students uh, and from teachers uh, and get their sense of what they're interested in uh, in terms of the name to bring that information to the school committee and then the school committee would vote a couple names to come forward to this committee. Uh, so we did go through that process. We did a couple surveys of the community. Uh, the first, the first survey of the community that I did um, elicited really what how how I constructed the surveys. I put out three names. I put out Carver Elementary School, the Governor John Carver Elementary School, the Irwin K Washburn Elementary School, uh, and then people could write in any name they chose if they wanted to do a writing candidate. The reason why I selected those names for the original survey was those are the names that currently exist. Um, so obviously the Governor John Carver Elementary School is the front building. Uh, the Irwin K. Washburn Elementary School is the back building. Uh, and according to Desi, our current name of the school is Carver Elementary School. So when, those, when the two individual buildings were combined, um, we had to give the combined schools a name. Uh, and Liz Sorrell, through Desi, named the school Carver Elementary School. So according to the state, currently our official name is Carver Elementary School, with the Governor John Carver Building in the Erwin K. Washburn Building. So that's how Desi recognizes us. So that was the decision process I made in terms of putting those three names out to the community. But then I wanted to give the community the opportunity to give other suggestions beyond those names. Though my general sense was that People, from conversations with people, my sense was that the, really it was going to be either Carver Elementary School or the Governor John Carver Elementary School. Through that first survey, uh, there were 534 votes for Carver Elementary School, 410 votes for the Governor John Carver Elementary School, uh, and a total of I guess, uh, 50 votes for Erwin K. Washburn. There were also a few names that were written in, uh, and I, I talked about two of these at school committee. Uh, the, the names, and there were only a couple names that came up that had multiple votes, uh, and that was Ellis Atwood, um, Benjamin Shirtliff, and Elizabeth Sorrell. Each of those names had a, a few votes for them. Uh, but ov obviously the overwhelming majority seemed to be towards Carver Elementary School and the Governor John Carver Elementary School. I also did a survey of just the teachers, of the staff at the elementary school. Um, and the staff at the elementary school, <clears throat> they selected by 82% to 17%, or 82% to 18%, uh, picked Carver Elementary School over the Governor John Carver Elementary School. So there were 60 staff members who voted for Carver Elementary School. There were 13 staff members who voted for the Governor John Carver Elementary School. And that survey went out to the staff after the, after the school committee said that those were the two names that were going to go forward to this committee. So at our school committee meeting in September, uh, the school committee reviewed this. We talked about it. We talked about the historical names a little bit. Uh, they weighed in, and they voted to descend the two names of Carver Elementary School and Governor John Carver Elementary School uh, forward to this committee. So that's, that's kind of the background of what led us to be here this evening in terms of the names. Well, I think, Scott, just to add to that real quickly, we also had part of the discussion saying that that wasn't what it was limited to. That's what we put forth as a suggestion. But ultimately, this committee decides what that name is going to be. So it could be different than either of those two suggestions if that came forth. Yeah, so the, the school committee's policy is that the school committee would send names forward to the building committee. Uh, it doesn't specifically state the building committee has to choose one of the names that are sent forward. Uh, the school committee did not take a specific vote for one name or the other. Uh, the board of selectmen did. I don't know if Michael wants to address that vote or if uh, because that's your board or I can. Uh, so I believe the board of selectmen voted four to one for the Governor John Carver Elementary School. Uh, within the school committee policy, that's not a specific part of the process, uh, but surely the board of selectmen can weigh in on that, and they did. So I think I should share their thoughts on the name. Can we uh, draft Mr. Dunham to have a comment on it, maybe? Because we've given comments from the school committee. Thank you, Alan. Okay. It was actually a uh, much more spirited debate than I thought it would be. Yeah. Uh, we had one member who felt strongly for Carver Elementary. Uh, that was the vice chair. And then the other four of us felt equally strong about the Governor John Carver Elementary School because of the history 
in town, and it's, it's sort of like, you know, if we got rid of the Governor John Carver, we're kind of abandoning part of the history of Carver as it goes forward. But So we took the vote, and it did come out uh, four to one in favor of the Governor John Carver Elementary, uh, knowing we have no force on it, but, you know, we just thought we'd go ahead and let the school committee know that, hey, that this is what we thought. But, you know, so I respectfully submit that that was the Board of Selectmen's decision. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, um, discussion. And remember, if you get to the point where you want to move on a vote, uh, you can move to end discussion. And should we make we'll a motion? Have to should we make a motion for a name uh, before we begin sure. discussion? Uh, you know, I had a thought on it, Scott. Uh, if you if you uh, make a motion for one name. Mm -hmm. Then we vote, and people that want the other name have to vote that down. Right. If we put both names on the motion, and you either vote for one or the other, uh, I don't know how that sounds. Well, you would vote. I think you'd vote for one and turn it down. Then someone would make a motion for the other name, and then you. It's take the official the way. way. Yeah. <laughs> Does anybody have any name other than those names? I, I made a point at our meeting, and I'd just like to make it. I'm I'm not concerned with any of the names that come out. I think it's going to work out well either way. But you know, I work in a town where it's Henry B. Birkeland Elementary and Mary K. Good Elementary, and I know you know Thomas Jefferson High and George Washington High, but they don't say. Principal Henry B. Birkeland, or they don't say, you know, President uh, Thomas Jefferson. They just say the name. So <coughs> my thought was John Carver Elementary School still gives the the, the precedent to who it needs to be given to, but it, it sort of limits it a little bit, I guess, brings it closer. It's sort of a median in between, taking off the governor. Uh, mm -hmm. Just the thought. So take I, away the governor part. Well, that would be my thought. Just John Carver right. Elementary School, which sort of is the seems to be the theme of most schools when they name it after somebody, that they just really use the name instead of the title along with the name. Comments? I it's a thought. <clears throat> Can I comment? You know, I said it's a thought. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a yeah. good thought. Um, I I asked uh, <clears throat> Connie Shaw. The uh, gal that's uh, done a lot with the history in town. And um, where did uh, Governor John Carver come from? Well, he was the governor of the, uh, what is it, Plymouth Bay Colony? Mm -hmm. The first governor in the state of Massachusetts. So if we were going to leave it John Carver, I'd rather keep the governor John Carver in there as part of the historical name. Uh, I mean, that's where uh, I was thinking. Um, yep. Okay. Further discussion? Mr. Michael? Chairman, yep. I just want to bring everybody up to speed. When we bid out the project and it went out there, is it was bid out as Carver Elementary School, so that's what the sign, size, and letters are built upon. Um, so that's what's already been priced and already started to be <coughs> produced. I'm only bringing that up because that's what's on the table from the contract standpoint. It's not going to be millions of dollars to change the name, but I just want everybody to realize that, you know, if we do something different than Carver Elementary School, it is going to require some small change order. Again, it's a small change order, but it would have to be changed. Mm -hmm. So as you're well, talking about letters, each letter costs. The superintendent of the job told me that all they got to do is make them a little smaller letters <laughs> and you can equalize it. <laughs> Walter? <laughs> He's not going to venture. He's not From, getting in this. Him, you didn't talk to him as a superintendent. No, no, no. The, no, the superintendent of the construction. The construction From, company, yeah. Uh, right. From a design. Brian? Uh, Brian? Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, from a, from a design form. perspective, if you think about it, um, the entranceway is designed to have a sign over it. Um, and Governor John Carver, and that, I, I honestly, I don't think this, sh in my personal opinion, I don't think this should be a decision factor. Uh, it should be, people should, we should name what we want to name the school. But from a specific concept of uh, the space there, it's going to be a lot of letters for that sign that's been designed to go on the front entryway. But there's also going to be an entranceway sign on the street, uh, which hasn't been designed yet, and that would definitely could clearly put Car John Car uh, 
Governor John Carver on that entry sign uh, at the street in terms of that design. And I don't believe that's in the design. Well, I think we've gone to the point of so far out. That, that's they, so far. We haven't gone to that point. About the sign, uh, right. It was embossed. Yeah. With the lettering. Yeah. Yep. And so the, that front entryway sign, Governor John Calvert would be a lot of letters on that front entryway sign. But uh, like I said, I don't think that should be a factor in the decision. And there's not only one Michael. name that you that can be put into the building. And again, I'm focusing on the building. I mean, the building will have a name. But you also have different areas of the building that can be done. You could have the Governor John Library. You know, you can do stuff like that and, and, and put things in different areas. So there, you know, or the Erling K. Washburn, uh, I don't know. Uh, wing. Wing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there are different options down the road, too, for, for kind of um, trying to memorialize or memorize, uh, you know, something that's happened before. Okay. Um, one thing, you know, there is a lot of history in the town. You know, it's not just John Carver. I mean, and... and um, you know, you have William Savory, okay, who actually brought literacy to the town. That was his big thing. I don't know if everybody realizes that, but he bought all the books for the first library and, you know, wrote the checks and, and um, you know, and actually had um, Charles Dickens visit the town. I don't know if a lot of people know that, but anyway. Um, <coughs> so I like the idea, you know, candidly of, of you know, maybe working with somebody like Connie Shaw, right? Who knows all the history much more than I do, and maybe embellishing those names throughout the school itself, and and that would stir stir discussion about well, who was this person, who was that person, and all that. So when you know, and I don't think that's a bad idea. There are, there are a lot of there are a lot of gathering spaces. Right, there's a lot of spaces there that spaces, could, but that would add. Areas, areas. There's, there's yeah. private areas, gathering spaces, a reading room. Uh, there are spaces. And there's people through the centuries. A small so, plaque, and we couldn't right. name them all. And there is people through the centuries, including contemporary people, mm -hmm. that have done a lot for the town. I like that. You know, and I think, you know, there's a, there's a great chance, and I think we should. You know, this this is how a way to bring up discussion. It's all inside, right. you know, and, and all the different. There's a lot of rooms. There's a gymnasium there, right? There's a there's a dining hall. There's all these other things. So maybe we, there's a way to do that and figure out who are the people that really, really made an impact on this town. I mean, you, when you think about it, there's a lot of interesting people. And you, one of my favorite things, my I love strolling through the cemetery over by the Union Church. I just it's like it's it's like walking. You know, it's it's. I don't know if everybody's ever done it, but I mean, it's really, really. F I just love doing that. You know, to walking down there and thinking of the stories and 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 the history and the families and the impacts that the and the lives, the lives that have been lived. Um, so I think we ought to think long and hard about that, and maybe you know, not box ourselves into one name for the school and and just leave it fairly generic, and and then maybe really drill down on the inside rooms might be a way to do it where I think it would add for a lot more discussion and maybe a learning option for the, some of the kids. I think it's a great idea. I, I, I love that idea. I think it would be really a great opportunity for us to work with, um, as you mentioned, Connie Shaw, and just have um, to, and take the time to do it so that we're not rushing, so that we have the time to thoroughly really gather a lot of the, you know, the history and the roots of, of Carver. I think that's a it's a great educational opportunity for our children. You know, what we do sometimes is we just move so far away after one generation after another, and, the, and we forget about our history. And I think that's important for us to, to instill in our children, to teach them about that, and then to continue to have dialogue about it. And having, you know, I was just thinking, okay, the Avery collection, that sounds kind of nice for our book collection area. So I think that is a, that's a great idea. I love it. Okay. No. No, I mean, honestly, everyone has just said what I was thinking that we we don't have to lose the history that everybody, you know, especially people who have lived in this town for a number of years, want to keep within the school, but we can still have it, keep it very generic, but have touches of the building, have that history to it, maybe even more than just, you know, Governor John Irwin K. Washburn. I agree with everything everyone's just said. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion to name the school the Carver Elementary School. Second. Second. Okay, it's been made. The motion's been made and seconded. Now, I have a question. Uh, Heather, we have one member that isn't here, Sarah. Oh, 
Can I read what she had for input? Um, Am I allowed I, to do that? <laughs> I, I don't have any. I think you should read what she had for input. Remember the committee? She sent, she sent in her opinion. She's just she tied up at another board. Is it right like a vote? Is that she, kind of well, I mean, she said if she was allowed to do an absentee so. vote, I know what it is. <laughs> but she also had um, she had some input, and I don't know if if it's okay to share. Yes, it. I think that it is. It's part of the discussion. Um, so she likes the simplicity of Carver Elementary School, since it's the only elementary school in this town. Doesn't see the reason to have a secondary name, but wants to keep the history there. Um, it makes sense because coupled with the Carver Middle High School, it's just kind of keeping with the flow of the town. Um, and so that's just, that's all she had to say. Okay. <clears throat> and she has a vote? She does. Uh, yeah, John. Yeah, I just wanted to add to the motion that I, um, to your motion there that for a future time, we could discuss the interior rooms okay. and, and, you know, just so we could revisit that at some point. So the motion would include a, the, our ability to revisit. We're not foreclosing on the future idea of naming the rooms and other spaces to, okay, just, okay. Is, is that okay? Yes. Yeah, okay. We, we can bring back a list of the, we can, right. we can bring back a list of possible spaces and uh, bring back to the group, get some more. I, I get more information on the people that have really affected this town yep. both from the from, from the 17th century forward right. I think it's very important to have you know the representation and what a learning ex I mean I just you know and, and I think it'd be great and I think this and take it a step further you know you could actually have maybe in some of these spots artifacts that actually are germane to that particular person whatever they are you know because a lot of that stuff survives and it could be, it could be, you know, maybe a little something from, you know, Ellis Atwood as an example, or something from jo Governor John Carver, maybe some papers from the, li you know, I mean, there, there could be something, you know, make it. Picture so, with a newspaper article. Right, or something, right, of, uh, and, and, and so forth. Right. There uh, that there is a Carver room in the library with s many pieces of artifacts of the town and its history. And I'm not saying that that wouldn't be a good idea. I think it would. I don't know if you could get everything in there, but I mean that it, it would be a good idea. Um, Michael? Just to follow up on that, as, as part of our weekly construction meetings, you know, some of these project areas and meeting rooms, they're all going to be different colors for identity pieces. So, you know, this is a great way of celebrating some of the history that's there. And I think with the, the school administration and, and with the, um, the weekly meetings that we have on the stuff, we can put together a list yep. and bring that back with input as to how to make this happen to kind of, because I think everybody, there's a consensus here that sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. So why don't we work with that group and the administration, try to put something like that together and bring it back at a future meeting. Maybe determine how many rooms or spaces would be able to be named first. And then kind of right. come down with the list yeah. from there. No, no. Yeah. Put that together, yeah. I'll second that amendment. Thank you. Okay, good. Now that we're all clear on the motion and and the amendment to the motion, um, is there any further discussion? Okay. Uh, I'd rather have a hand raise. Okay. So all those in favor of this motion, raise your hand, signifying yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and what's Sarah's? Sarah's She's allowed to, yeah. What's her? Unanimous. Oh, Carver Elementary. Not yes. unanimous. <laughs> I'll do this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they didn't raise his hand. You raise your hand. It's ten. Okay, it's four. Carver Elementary. All those opposed, raise your hand. Um, only because I would have preferred the governor, John Carver. But um, I'm fine with that. And I'm fine with what you folks are, are doing. So the, uh, it's 10 to 1 in favor of the Carver Elementary School. That's the name of our new school. Uh, very good. Okay. But, <laughs> you don't need to. No, no, no. I've been in town for 54 years. I guess that might be part of it. I had Alan in school. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Is uh, what? Uh, is there any more discussion on the naming of the school? We're 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 complete on that, right? Okay. Um, 
next meeting or new business? Any other any other business we ought to be bringing up? The, the only other, I guess, I'd Scott? like to raise the issue of in terms of new business. Uh, just form me form me. Uh, I'm struggling to speak tonight. <laughs> Creating uh, a subcommittee just to look at the uh, grand opening, you know. So it, that's uh, August is going to become come quick, and I'm not saying it's going to happen in August, but we I think we should have to start thinking about planning what's that what's the grand opening of the school going to look like, and I think it'd be great to have a, a subcommittee uh, if the if everyone agrees. We did that with the fire station. Yeah. So we have a subcommittee put together and and uh, yeah. start okay, so start having that group meet and, and start planning for the opening. Do we even need a motion for that? Uh, is that a consensus kind of? Any? So, uh, so I, I would you be looking to, uh, for make a motion to create a subcommittee to uh, okay plan for the uh, grand opening? All right. Um, all those in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 It's unanimous, Kelly. Do you want to pick the members now? Or uh, you want, you want volunteers now, Scott, or how do we I'll, want to work? I'll, I'll be on the committee. I'm assuming Ruby's going to be on the committee. No, I'm, I'm voting. I'm, I'm, I'm in. Yeah, my hands are up. I already think that's an excellent committee. <laughs> <laughs> Heather, Dan, Ruby, Scott. Anybody else that would like to serve on that? I'll join if you want. James, sure. We actually we had talked about having a committee about seeing what to do with the old building, and that was pretty much it. And we can tie that into part of our discussions. That's what I mean. Yeah. They could overlap. They could be the same. Yeah. Really, yeah. Okay. That's very good. Um, I guess we're there on that one, Scott. Okay. Um, all right. Any other new business that anybody has? Suggestions? Okay. Next meeting, Walter, do we have any kind of schedule that we've got to meet or anything? Okay, so uh, would we, anybody have any suggestions as to, uh, I know we went from June till now. Right. Uh, I felt like okay. I was leaving the committee a little bit in the lurch. Um, so maybe, I don't know. Uh, maybe maybe November or something? Yeah. In between the holidays. In between the holidays? What about a, what about a walkthrough? Yeah, that's that's what I was idea. thinking, if we can yeah, do another like walkthrough. That. And yes, that's an so excellent on that, Walter, when should <coughs> we have the building heated? Before Thanksgiving, right? Uh, yeah, but the other thing on that is we don't have, well, we will have temporary construction lights, so yep. it's going to be later. It's going to be oh, it's going to be darker than that. Yeah. 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 I have my cell phone flashlight. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so that might not be a bad idea to do between the the Thanksgiving and, and Christmas holiday. Christmas. Will you yeah. have the lights then, Walter? It's going to be temporary construction well, lights. It's not going to be any. Darker than this room. I think even Walter in certain areas they'll be able to get the general sense even if you can't go through the whole building that way, you know. But the whole building just has yeah. construction lights, right? Right. Yeah, they do. Yeah, just you're not gonna see in every corner. Yeah. So your suggestion is targeting sometime between John and uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yes, yeah, so early December. Yes. What's your calendar look like, uh, somebody? Pulling it up. A Monday? That, uh, Early December, December 4th is a Monday. That's a Monday, right, Ruby? Yep. December 4th, yes. December 4th. No school committee okay. meeting. Right? <clears throat> no school committee meeting. No. Nope, a selectman. No. Okay. December 4th. And um, we'll have a meeting there afterwards or before? Or how would you like to do that? If we. If we need there. to have any discussion. In case it's too dark there, we might have to go somewhere else for the meeting, right? I think we can have the meeting there and we yeah. can. Yeah, it'd be fine. You know, unless okay. there's, because uh, we don't foresee a detailed agenda. Right. So it's just more of a quick <coughs> update. And if the meeting's only 15, 20 minutes, so we can stand and right. then just do the tour right from there. So can right. we turn that into one location place? Okay. Yeah. Do we, at that subcommittee, do we want to meet prior to that date and try to uh, at least come up with a. Absolutely. I think the subcommittee should meet. I mean, so if you want, we can pick a date for the subcommittee to meet too. Sure. Yeah. If you want to do that right now. Yeah. Sure. So um, the walkthrough will be December fourth at seven p.m. Or. It, that's what we've done in the past. Would okay. we want to change it? No, I'm. I'm just asking. It's, it's not so going to help much. Daylight savings are going to be dark at four o'clock anyway. Right. <laughs> right. Sure. So walk through seven p.m. December fourth, and then Exterior subcommittee. Right. Unless somebody wanted to go earlier, like six well, or six thirty, it's I'm up to you. You know, we're just keeping them around. It'll be dark at it. 
I mean, I could do it as early as 6.30 that day. Walter says still be there. Your cot's all set. <laughs> can you, can you have a light tower there? A light tower? No, I mean for outside, you know. We'll, we'll get a light tower. Fire department has one. Now. <laughs> so maybe that one night we put that up so people know. They're gonna <coughs> they, they have a coordinate. We'll get a uh, the fire department light tower over there. Okay, so the subcommittee for outside. Then? Yeah. Okay, so the for the whole committee is going to meet for a walkthrough on December fourth, mm -hmm. and any other related short business. Okay. Now the subcommittee. <laughs> you folks have a particular. Well, so, so we'll schedule. have our first meeting sometime in October. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Please. Yeah. It might need yeah. to be so flexible because we're going to be setting a lot of meetings this week too. Yeah, but let's we'll, we'll see if we can pick a date and we'll see. You're going through the budget stuff. Is there? Is there? Is it really for? Yeah, yeah. Doesn't matter to me what days work better for you. Tuesdays are the only days that are kind of tricky for me. So. Okay. You'd prefer not a Tuesday. Yep. I can't do uh, Thursdays. Thursdays are always good for me, man. No, Dan can't do Thursdays. <laughs> I got the robotics. Yeah. The kids. Mondays, yeah. Mondays are okay. Mondays are yeah. good. Not a meeting. Mondays are a Wednesday. Wednesdays are good. Yep. So how deep in October are we talking? I don't think we should go too far. Um, the ninth is a holiday, and the sixteenth is a school community meeting. How about Wednesday, October eleventh? Well, the eleventh, I do have a, uh, I have a conflict. What about that fourth? Day. The that's fourth, next, that's next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, it's next Wednesday I but I it's real quick. can't do that one. What about the 12th? Yeah. The, what about a Thursday, the 12th? Uh, Dan, can't Dan can't do Thursday. The robotics Sorry. at the school so with the kids. 18th? Wednesday the 18th? 18th. Everybody do Wednesday the 18th? 18th? Oh, yep, that's I can, relieving. That'll work. Okay, I can do, okay. Yep. We can all do Wednesday the 18th? October 18th. Yeah. October 18th. Yeah. Uh, seven. So give us another time to meet before the... Like go earlier? 6.30? We'll meet at central office. Is that right? Central office. At the school central office. Did you want to do six thirty? I can do six thirty. You guys? Six thirty is always better than seven. Yeah, for me. Yeah. If you guys yeah. can, if you can do six thirty, I can do six. I can. Do six, so six thirty right? central office. I can October eighteenth. Six, too, six yeah. So yeah, I had to said six thirty. Okay. Okay. Yeah, six thirty is fine. Okay, that works for me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's good. That's okay. Good. Okay. James, six thirty works. Okay, beautiful. Right. So that's good. October eighteenth. December fourth and October eighteenth, and then you will have some ideas to throw at us on the fourth. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so we might even get a second meeting in if we can. <coughs> yeah, yeah. We, well, we can. You know, yeah. Okay. I don't want to come up. Uh, we have any other business folks? Uh, anybody want to suggest a motion for adjournment? Uh, so moved. Second. Second. Yeah. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. Oh, no, no, never mind. Oh. I'm sorry. Th we're thank we you. Adjourning. We're we voting to adjourn. Adjourn. Oh. <laughs> are they were discussing.